later that morning, after the rest of the team has clearly woken up and somehow managed to get themselves out the door and on the way to school for the day, we find ourselves in Karen's living room where she and one last person remain inside, sharing a morning pot of tea together. Cass, how you doing? Not well. Oh, the previous evening did not go as well as anyone had probably hoped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the entire group probably explained more or less what happened to Karen. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I think Cass has uh, left one major thing unsaid so far. How how's she feeling about that? Uh, it's a tough position for her to be in because there are a bunch of new people, so she wasn't comfortable sharing everything with them. And she feels Mm -hmm. like maybe she let Karen down doing that because Karen asked her to help and she made things worse. Aw. And Karen has been very understanding the whole time, like not like pressuring Mm -hmm. her to say anything that she doesn't want to say or just like making sure that she's comfortable and doesn't have to talk with her voice if she doesn't want to, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the last of the Rhythmics crew have gone out the door. Karen has given her a nice lavender mug to sip some nice lavender tea with. Mm. So, um, I guess are you getting picked up or are you taking the bus or if you if you want we you could just stay for the day. Like, are you okay? How how are you feeling? Ah. Uh, no, I have, the bus isn't that that far. I can catch it. I have some homework to do and then there's a I got to meet my idol group for a practice thing Mm, so true yeah i just i know you asked me to help and i really thought i could help and i just made everything worse and i just feel really bad about it i i think you still did as well as you could have like you said that you found like a few little things at least we didn't know what an sft or whatever was before Mm. we know that's something to look for now right yeah we could have gotten a lot more. I I saw they had information on their computers and I panicked thinking I could just erase it all right away and that made everything come crashing down. What information was that? Their amplification tech thing. It uses AED. Karen freezes at that like, you, you mean someone else has it? Yeah, I thought I deleted all of it but they must have gotten a a backup copy or something and it's just like after i saw what happened at the mall it, i knew it was all my fault and now the gears that were starting to turn in your head the same gears are starting to turn in karen's head now like wait you don't think and she thinks for a sec we have been kind of suspicious of ashley do you th- think she might have gone poking around in some of your stuff? I mean, that's the only connection that I can think of. Unless Crimson Signal has more fingers out there than we're aware of. Hmm. I guess, again, I I don't want to pressure you to do anything, but do you think you'd be able to keep an eye on her for us and let us know if there's anything suspicious going on there? Cass, like, grips the mug tight for kind of like warmth and comfort and nods like i can do my best if they trust me enough to ask for my help again let me know i think they will i think i don't know what they're all thinking in their heart of hearts but i don't blame you for what happened like you panicked and you didn't know exactly how their system worked and we asked you to come we we knew that Things could go sideways. This isn't the sort of thing that normal teenagers usually get up to. Not even normal super idols, isn't it? I guess not. I, I f- I'm sorry I wasn't there for all of you either. I f- I kind of felt like I should have been. I was gonna. I, I wasn't sure. But in the end, I I did feel like someone had to be on the outside. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I could have done, but maybe, maybe I could have done something. Cass, like, sets the mug down, 
to reach out and put a hand on like Karen's upper arm and like you organized I mean all of this you have this super cool secret base for us to fall back to you maybe we all could do more but we can do more next time right I hope so I feel like in general there's more that I could be doing a lot more but it's I don't know it's complicated I think you you have some things that are tough for for you um I it's kind of similar for me. I have some stuff I'd rather not talk about sometimes myself. I get that. Mm. If if you ever do want to talk, I'm here for you, okay? Mm, I appreciate that. Thank you, Cass. I, I, I've appreciated like the last few weeks a lot, really. Sometimes it's tough for me to make like really close friendships. So this whole this whole last month meeting everybody has really been great you know yeah you have some really good friends hmm I think in time they could be yours too I think they might already be Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and today with me are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hello. Luca. Hi. And Liv. Hello. Mm-hmm-hmm. Happy times, happy times. <laughs> we all have such happy times here on Super Idols. <laughs> So light, so chill, cool vibes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing traumatic happened at all last episode. We're just, we're the Happy Masks podcast. We have like the bright pink yeah. album art and the heart. And we must yeah. be happy. <laughs> Good yeah. idol vibes only. It's like um, Magic and Madoka was really happy, right? Like it was bright colored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Magical Girls in general. Everybody underestimates how <laughs> unhappy Magical Girls as a genre is. <laughs> So we're just on brand is what we are. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent intentional. <laughs> Super uh, Idols RPG, a hundred percent idol, a hundred percent trauma. <laughs> That's us. Put that on a mug and sell it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a yappy dog upstairs that my mums are looking after right now. <laughs> <laughs> just wants to be a part of the recording. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do need, like, an animal companion. <laughs> That's the one thing we're missing from the brand. <gasps> That's true. We need to get y'all a yeah. mascot at some point. That's true. And then the pet can just wear rhythmic merch <laughs> at all our concerts. <laughs> is, is that not Karen? <laughs> <laughs> As it stands now, Karen is your mascot. <laughs> Well, let's not talk about that, because that's a video essay yeah. in the making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But that's just a theory, an idle theory. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, before we, we hop in to the quick recap of what happened, um, I'm just going to mention some game business up front. Um, Jaden gained a lot of potential last session. <laughs> Hell Yeah. All part of the plan. Yes, exactly. This is a great game. It, it really is. <laughs> so you have another advancement. Tell us what you've picked up. Yeah, I picked uh, Take a Move from another playbook. And the playbook I took a move from was The Transformed. And the move is called I Am Not My Body. Mm. Which basically means like whenever I take a powerful physical blow, I may roll as if I have too few conditions marked. But if I do get 10 plus anyway, I must choose to lose control of myself in a terrible way. Mm. So it's a very juicy kind of risk reward type thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see how that would backfire at all. Nope. Me neither. Especially with a Nova. <laughs> I think it'd be fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> so we left off in the wake of your less than successful Crimson Signal heist, Crimson Job, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
things went sideways pretty quickly for all of you in a lot of different ways, but you did manage to make it back to Karen's in, uh, well, mostly One Piece. Queen Bee did split off at one point on the way back. Angie kept in touch with Alan via text to make sure they were all right. And then Alan finally arrived back at Karen's before the rest of you woke up, only to insist that they were going to take their bike all the way back home after having walked all night already. And Karen wasn't having that, so she revealed to Alan what many on and off this podcast have long suspected, that Karen does indeed have some kind of powers. <laughs> And she used these powers to warp Alan and their bike back to their own house before disappearing again. And then that leaves us later the same morning. Everyone at Karen's place has woken up somehow. Uh, I mean, you all stayed out until like one or two in the morning and then stayed up another couple of hours after that watching bad TV. So by my calculations, y'all maybe got like two or three hours of sleep before having to wake up and get ready for school again. <laughs> So you're probably all kind of zombie-like this morning. Uh, maybe having the heist on a weekday wasn't <laughs> the best idea y'all have ever had. Never heist on week weekdays. <laughs> Rookie mistake on our part, honestly. You're all learning. <laughs> it's all a learning experience <laughs> is what this all is. The movies don't talk about what day of the week to do the heist song. <laughs> yes. How are we to know? <laughs> Otherwise perfectly accurate. But you do somehow manage to get yourselves together as best as you can. Karen helps you out and you all gather your stuff and you find yourselves out on the morning bus back to Fort McNally. You got on the bus pretty early in the route since Karen's way kind of far out away from the school. So you managed to snag yourselves the much coveted back seats of the bus, which are conveniently arranged in a sort of semicircle formation. So you can all sit facing each other during this trip to school. And uh, this is where we're going to pick up for now. Um, Alan, we'll get back to you in a bit here. <laughs> How y'all doing? Uh, it must be said, Lucia definitely spread her feet out in the seat in front of her so she could kind of like slouch. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I think I, I want to add to that, like, Jaden was about to sit in that seat, and then she does that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll sit over here. And sit next on the other seat. It's the opposite seat. I think Angie will sit down, but she'll probably lean her head on someone's shoulder and just snooze most of the way <laughs> <laughs> If it's Lucia's, it probably isn't, but if it is, she was snoozing too, so nap buddies. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down for it. Let's do nap buddies. I like this image. Lucia and Angie yeah. are just napping in the one corner. Yeah, if there are any fan artists that interested in the show, you can definitely add me <laughs> with that fan art. I'm totally cool with it. At live in a day, just hit us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, they're just too tired to be snarky. I know how that feels. The tiredness has stripped it all away. And how about everybody else? How's everyone else coping this morning? Oh, um, Jaden's basically a zombie. I think he's like yawning every three or four seconds. Like he's kind of fall asleep for like a moment and then wake up again. And he's just constantly like nodding on and off to sleep. He needs much more than just two hours of sleep to function mm -hmm. as a human being. Fair. Human beings in general do. <laughs> <laughs> I think Valerie was pretty quiet through the night once they got back. Didn't say anything, but is also just quiet and tired, like not falling asleep. She's probably pulled all-nighters before, but as just, you know, keeping an eye on everyone and trying to make sure that nobody's, like, gonna fall over. <laughs> Fair concern on a moving vehicle, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds like it's a more or less silent ride <laughs> otherwise. Actually, I was gonna say, this, this, maybe it's a, you know, bad time for the characters, but this might be a good time for Valerie to talk to Jaden. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, sure, it's a fairly long bus ride too, so you have some time. Eventually one of you might speak up. I guess at some point during the ride, uh, Valerie will say, uh, hey, can I, can I ask you something, Jaden, about, about your powers? Um, uh, yeah? Yeah, what's that? Um, you, you have really strong powers, and a lot of them, and... Just how, how do you make sure you don't hurt people with them? Um, I, um, I don't, a lot of practice, I guess. Um, it's not like I haven't hurt people before. 
Um, actually, when I first got them, I hurt my little sister. I burnt her arm. She's okay now. Oh, but she so, just, she's fine now. She's sorry, completely fine now. So, sorry, um, I shouldn't shouldn't have assumed. Yeah, no. It's, after that, that happened, I vowed to do my best to control my powers, and I guess I just kept at it. I don't know. It helps me. I don't know if it'll help you, but when I'm using my powers, I kind of think of a song or some music in my head and just kind of move my powers along with it because music has a constant rhythm. As wild as it can be, it tends to be fairly predictable at its bones. And I feel like when you're using your powers, you want them to be predictable, at least to you. Yeah. So sometimes I think of a drum beat or a catchy song and just kind of tune my abilities to that. Okay. Uh, th- thank you. <laughs> why, why do you ask? Something happened last night and I almost did something really... I, I, I want to make sure that I don't keep hurting people when I lose control. I mean, um, I'm no teacher, but I could try helping. I, I, I don't know if how useful my method would be. So I, I guess like I'm a drummer to the core. So I guess a drum beat tends to help me, but it might be different for you. Yeah, maybe. I, 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 I think that would, that would be great. Thank you. Um, obviously not right now, but. Yeah, when we have a bit more rest, I feel like. Oh yeah, I've I've pulled all nighters before, so if you want a nap? I'll make sure everyone, you know, doesn't miss our stops or whatever. Hmm, I I actually appreciate that. I'm, I think I might I might actually sleep a bit. Okay. And Jaden kind of like just slowly tips to the side and just falls asleep. Oh, <laughs> just trying to check if this this might be Valerie sharing a vulnerability or weakness possibly. Oh yeah, that's very true. I always forget about those. It sounds like you shared a vulnerability or weakness with someone, in which case you would give them influence over you and ask if they honestly think there's hope for you. If they say yes, mark potential or clear one box on your doom track. If they say no, mark a condition or mark your doom track. Uh, you know, I've with this, this contract I have in all of you know the resources that we've been getting from Rain Shadow. Do you think, do you think I could even be an idol without all that? Well, of course. I mean, of course, the help is always helpful. But I mean, it doesn't mean you you can't do it without it. Why? I just I get more from them than I let on, and I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do. Hmm. Well, I don't know entirely what you mean but uh, I've known you for a bit now and I think even without whatever help they're giving you 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 could do it thanks thanks you should get some sleep yeah I'm gonna thanks I'm gonna nap Aww. I guess to the rest of you <laughs> nap for the rest of the bus ride to school yeah pretty much Mm-hmm. definitely I think there's a few moments where like try to elbow Lucia to get more comfortable, but other than that... <laughs> <laughs> Play it off like a bump in the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's dead to the world, so I do think she kind of moves over, but more oh. just because, like, she can't <laughs> fight back. <laughs> when we finally do get there, I think she's just like, I should skip. I should skip class. This is stupid. <laughs> uh, but it ends up getting off the bus. <laughs> and I guess mechanically, um, would you like to give Jaden influence over you and let him shift your labels, or do you want to clear a mark on your doom track? Uh, I think I give Jaden influence regardless, but I'm going to, between marking potential or clearing doom track, I'm going to mark potential. Oh yes, sorry, I was reading the wrong part of that. Y- yeah, you can you can mark potential. Uh, but yeah, Jaden gets to, since you already have influence over. Valerie, you get to shift my labels based on that conversation. You use Freak to control your powers, right? Yes. Um, I'll bump up Freak and lower danger. That's it, yeah. All right. So while the rest of the team is riding to school, Alan, 
after Karen dropped you off, let's say, you get back inside your house and your parents were very surprised to see you back home, understandably. And they were very worried, considering, as far as they know, their child just biked all the way home from a sleepover at five in the morning. And when it's clear that Alan hasn't slept, they insist on calling out to the school for them and saying that Alan isn't feeling well, so they can rest for at least part of the day. They aren't forcing Alan to talk about what happened yet, because clearly they're very tired. But again, they're quite clearly worried. Uh, does Alan accept the offer to stay home for a while and get some sleep? Yes, and they also have a lie ready. That they realized that when they were dozing off, they did transform, and so they got out of the house because they didn't want the others to find out. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so the, the story that you're telling is basically that you went as Queen Bee, but detransformed and got scared? Because they know about your powers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. That makes sense. I think they buy that for sure. I'm glad somebody <laughs> is getting a little bit of sleep at least, or trying to anyway. How successful do you think you are? Mm, not very much. There's uh, a lot to think about. Mm, to say the least. What are some of Alan's thoughts as they lay in bed? Well, that they fell apart again, and that was not supposed to happen. After the whole zero degrees thing, they were supposed to be over that. They were supposed to be ready. They proved themselves. But apparently no. And uh, they feel like they let Angie down. Because Angie is always just so strong and so unstoppable. And they think about how they just sent that one bee to die. Oh yes, R.A.P. Or well, R.A.B. Heather. Hmm. And they knew what they were doing, and they did it anyway. And what the hell was that with Kevin? What indeed? You think about what you saw there. Again, you saw the world look like it shifted around you. You feel like you felt something there that was neither you nor Karen, and you're not sure what exactly it was. It was very hard to focus on. Almost like you couldn't perceive it, but you knew something was there. And why didn't she tell us? Why did she let us go in there alone? If she could have helped. You have a lot of very fair and pertinent questions swirling around in your brain that are probably keeping you from sleeping, but at least you're resting. Maybe you get in and out of sleep for a little while throughout the day. Do you message the others to let them know that you're okay, by the way? Oh yeah, around like 6 um, I'm sending a message on this guy, though. Just, uh, hey, uh, I'm sorry I left. I need to clear my head. I'll, I'll meet you after school. Hey there, all you fine folks. Hope you're enjoying this uh, little shorter episode so far. I think we all kind of deserved a little bit of a breather episode after the last one both in and out of fiction. Uh, the, if you listen to the Patreon content this week, you'll you'll see just how tired we all were when we were recording this, so a lot of the yawns in this episode are, in fact, real. <laughs> uh, but in in the spirit of the shorter episode, I've only got one thing to tell you about this, this episode, more or less, um, and that's that we've got a Halloween special coming up. Ooh, it's spooky season, yes! Um, so we are going to be playing a one-shot of Nathan Blade's very good game, Heartbeats in Perfect Sync. Um, and we're gonna try and get that up later this month, probably on or around the day of Halloween itself. Uh, we're also going to try and get the regular episode of Super Idols ready for when it's due on the 24th. But if it does end up being too much editing for myself and Kathleen to do both of those things, you might just get the one-shot for later in October. Um, so if you do just get the one shot, <laughs> that'll be why. Um, it's probably going to be a pretty big project. That one shot recording ended up being quite long, so you'll have a real, real good juicy session for that. <laughs> it ended up being a real fun time, and we're very, very excited to share it with everybody. Uh, and if you wanted to maybe prepare for this one shot so you know what's going on game-wise, uh, why don't you go pick up a copy of Nathan's game yourself? You can go over to their itch page at sixofspades.itch.io. That's S-I-X-O-F-S-P-A-D-E-S dot itch dot I-O. 
Um, there you can get the Heartbeats in Perfect Sync game for as little as five dollars, five tiny little dollars, that's all. And you get this wonderful little game. There's also a bunch of other wonderful little games there, like Agents of Hue and Beyond Mars, and there's some zine stuff like the Queer Cyberpunk's Guide to Tabletop RPGs. As with everything Nathan puts their hands on, it's all wonderful stuff, so you should absolutely go to their page and give them your money. Please. Do. Uh, and beyond that, I will also remind you once again about our Patreon! Yay! Patreon at Aaron Cerise. It's one dollar or more to get some extra audio from the show, like before and after session talk for various episodes. Um, this episode in particular has some really fun before session talk. <laughs> we had, again, we were all quite tired and a little bit loopy before the recording, so we had a lot of fun. Uh, especially Liv ended up dragging Drac a lot with uh, a series of devastating puns before the episode. It's great fun, so you should definitely listen to that if you are a member of the one dollar or more Patreon supporters. Um, and if you're if you're feeling saucy, you can also support us at the the five dollar level or more. That will get you uncut versions of all of our episodes. Um, fun fact, by the way, um, the scene at the start of this episode with Alice, I actually recorded with her as a stinger for the previous episode, but that episode ended up being so long that it couldn't possibly fit in there. So you get to hear it now, and you also get to hear it and all the uncut stuff around it um, included as part of the uncut recording for this episode this month. So you can look forward to that if you are a $5 supporter. You know what else you look, for look forward to if you're a $5 supporter? You look forward to your name getting shouted out on the podcast every now and then. Like all of these lovely people you're about to hear right now. Their names are Icicle Prism, Rain Crystal, Pike, Lady Plague, Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, Sensei1477, Rowan B, and Sea Dog 9 Thank you all so much for supporting us. All right, we'll be getting back to our show very shortly here. Uh, before we do, we'll give you an ad for the Junket Podcast, which is another great show on the Big A Roll Dice Network that you should check out. They're a D and D actual play podcast, but playing way outside the usual D and D setting. They're playing an outer space campaign with a crew that includes some really cool aliens that were just designed just for this campaign setting. They're very, very well <laughs> designed and. and cool looking aliens. Also, they have a character that is a robot named Schlurp. How can you not love a robot named Schlurp? You, you can't say no to that. Just <laughs> so you should definitely go give the Junket podcast a listen, especially if you are a sci-fi head, which I, I hope some of you are. <laughs> oh, not scripting these bits is continuing to going, continuing to going fabulously. Yes, perfect grammar. Always. Never better from me. <laughs> All right. While well, you enjoy the rest of the episode, talk to y'all a little later next episode, whether that's our special or the regular episode or whenever that is. Bye! The year is 2225, and the end of the universe is nigh. Welcome to the Junket Podcast. The Junket Podcast is an actual play and really gay TTRPG adventure currently running the Maelstrom Campaign, a science fiction take on Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition featuring spaceships, space aliens, and a whole bunch of space gays. Follow a found family of misfits and miscreants on a cosmic caper that features science and magic, love, loss, and a whole lot of laughter. Who knows, maybe they'll even save the universe or something along the way. Did that tickle your fancy? If it did, new episodes launch every other Thursday at 5pm GMT on all major and minor podcasting platforms. See you soon in the Maelstrom Galaxy. Everybody who is going to school makes it to school and makes it through the school day as best they can. I guess there's probably not much that would happen during the school day since you all are so very tired. Maybe like you managed to get like a nap in during lunchtime, so that might help a little bit. <laughs> but otherwise, you have your club meeting after school and then Alan can make their way to school and transform on the way to make it there in time for that. Uh, I'm gonna try and uh, get there a little a little early, so I can be there when they arrive. Oh sure, sure. 
I would like to race mundane and lower superior. Sounds good. And you arrive at the room, and this is one of the rare occasions where uh, Karen has not shown up early to the meeting. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, and since Alan is still a little sleep deprived and not fully there, the transformation doesn't. Well, when you arrive, uh, they're wearing. It's just a big uh, stripy yellow and black hoodie with floppy antennae on the on the hood. Oh, <laughs> Aww, oh no. it's so cute. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's it's like a it's like one of those panda hoodies, but as but with bee patterning and the little fluff ball antennas on top. Oh, that's very cute. Queen bee sadness hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what you all walk in on as you <laughs> get into the club room, is the sight of Queen Bee laying back in probably a chair against the wall in this very cozy hoodie. Uh, hey, Bee. Hey, Bee. Wait, uh, where's, where's Karen? I, I don't know. Oh. I, we were at her house this morning. Like, she was at school, right? Wait, did she even get on the bus with us? How does Karen get to school? She did not get on the bus with you. Um, She stayed behind with Cass, actually. She said she had a couple things she needed to help Cass with before she left. Okay. Mm, I wonder if it maybe ran a little long, and uh, Angie's mm. going to text her. See, I know I should have skipped school. Like, I knew it. I knew it in my heart. I knew it in my gut. Ugh. Well, we're here now. Anyway, she texts uh, Karen. Valerie is looking way more tired and out of it than she did in the morning, as sometimes you do when it's 8, 8 a.m. and you go, this is fine, I don't need that much sleep, and then it's, <laughs> you know, 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Two hours later, they just <laughs> crash. Uh, and eventually you get a response back from Karen oh. that said, called out sick today, didn't get as much sleep, as surprised you all went. Mm. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Anyway, um, yeah, Karen's at home sleeping like uh, we all should probably be doing. Okay. Okay. Um, so last night didn't go that well. Yeah, you yeah. can say that. But it's because we underestimated Crimson Signal a bit. We did get some information, and that information is there's a lot in there they don't want people to know. Yeah. I mean, if you go into, like, a random finance building, you wouldn't see that kind of security on every single floor. Mm-hmm. I know, because, you know, parents were... Anyway, they're hiding something, and maybe we just need to do more recon or think of another way to find that information. But... That's what I'm going with. We were just didn't have all the information about this company and only more questions. Like, what even went wrong? You know, Valerie and I were fine. And she, like, looks over at Valerie because she will cover for her. Valerie avoids eye contact. Okay. Um. Well, uh, Cass was hacking in to get the information for us. Um, and then I guess something went wrong and she tripped the alarm. Yeah, the guards swarmed us pretty quickly. Yeah, but we all got out, all of us, and we're all, we're all safe, and that's the important thing. Yeah, well, not thanks to me. Um, I think we all screwed up, or I think, you know, we all weren't prepared. I mean, those guards had, like, anti-idol bracelets or whatever. Like, no, it right. wasn't... Maybe we were not prepared, but you, you kept your cool and you got us out. Jaden risked his life to distract the guards. I, I don't know what you two did, but I'm sure it was by taking. I, I'm sorry. I just, I had a bad feeling about this. I, I, I was worried from the start and I didn't say it because I, because I'm Queen Bee. I'm supposed to be this stone cold dance fighter and I just, didn't want to admit I was scared. I mean, it's like fine to be scared. It happens, but that's why we did our research. We were prepared. I was at least, but I mean, it's whatever. I guess, you know, 
You guys screwed up. We, look, I also pretend to be cool and calm and scary and violent and I, I keep, I keep messing up every time I, I try to actually get in a fight and lose control or, or lose my powers, but I think we need to work on our, our powers and figuring out how to use them if we try something like this again. Oh, we're gonna try something like this again. Yeah, can't stop. The next time we're gonna go in the front door and we're gonna take what we want. Also, I wasn't cool. I just got really mad. And that worked. When I get mad, I'm just good at doing strong stuff. That's it. I, I don't really like risk my life. I, I knew I could get away. So I used that to an advantage and distracted him. I, it wasn't as selfless as it might have come across. I wish there was some kind of group comfort and support mechanic right now trying to decide who should roll comfort and support for Queen Bee. I think it makes sense that maybe Valerie does. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's what I was really trying to do is to reach out and say, I feel the same way. That's okay. But yeah, Valerie I think is doing a lot of it, so we'll let Valerie roll that first. Uh that's an eleven. Oh damn, okay. Nice. 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 That's what happens when you have a panic attack and shift all of your points into mundane. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Vivi. I I know it's not easy. I mean, I I have like a tenth of your power, and I keep messing up. I can't imagine what it's like being you. But you're trying, and I see you getting better all the time. Um. Thank you. I. We, we just need to get better and, and make sure that we, we all have more control uh, in situations like that. Yeah, and, and we need to be more honest with each other. Um, if, if, maybe if I told you and we shouldn't hide, like, you're, you're, my th- you're my friends. I, I shouldn't hide things from you. And There's something I, I, I need to come clean about. Uh, what is it? I invited Sagittaria to the show. Huh? I sent them a letter. I I just wanted to rub it in their faces because we were at the stormlight and they were empty, but I, I guess they... Oh. 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 I mean, <laughs> we did totally kick their ass, though, so... Yeah. Yeah, so... We did. I mean, definitely not, like, the worst thing you could have done, but, I mean, if you want... To do that again, maybe just let us know. It's okay. I mean, we kicked their ass. So if they had kicked our asses, I probably would have been more mad. But they chose to rise to the bait. So yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, it it did turn out fine. But thank you for for telling us. Oh, uh, does being honest about that is uh, enough of a sacrifice to clear guilty? Oh, uh, hmm. <laughs> Good question. Uh, make a sacrifice. Is that a sacrifice? I don't know if it is necessarily because everybody took it pretty yeah, in stride. Yeah, it went pretty well. It would have been if it like significantly hurt you in the eyes of the others. Makes sense. The real sacrifice would have been the other thing you could have revealed here, but understandable <laughs> that you didn't. Which one? <laughs> yeah, there is a few things, aren't there? <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> Wait, y'all got secrets? Crazy could not be me. <laughs> I mean, I I don't have any secrets. So. Don't you lie to these people. <laughs> yeah, secrets? I don't know anything about secrets, I say, as I update my flowchart of who I've told what. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, suspicious thing. The anti-idol bracelets, I know I mentioned this before, but... Oh yeah, the, you guys actually still have those, like, because Jaden grabbed two of them. Yeah. Ooh. I think... Those are useful to have, but clearly they were concerned about people with idle powers finding this information. So they're definitely, there's something shady going on. Uh, I was about to say, I probably should have said this at some point earlier during the day, but if any of you have been looking at like 
news on your phones and whatnot today. You'll have seen a few news stories about Crimson Signal's entire internal network going down and how they are currently on the lookout for people who broke into the building last night, but they can't identify who they are because their internal network also took down all the camera footage conveniently. Phew. <laughs> So all they have to go on is the one person they did see, which is a, a tall teenager in a black hoodie and half a Phantom of the Opera mask. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so people are currently on the lookout for the Phantom of the Opera, I guess. Hell yeah. <laughs> is that not already an idol? <laughs> Wait, is that like, that's, that has to be like Wait. a persona. <laughs> no, not the local drama clubs being dragged down once again <laughs> by us. <laughs> yes. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> they just go to every single musical featuring. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so we need to get rid of those. Oh. But I don't know, elementum, you have fire powers, right? So just burn them. Wait, why are we getting rid of them? Like we should look into them. Oh, I think the hoodie I mean, and the and the mean mask. A hoodie and a mask. Oh, not oh, the hoodie yeah, and a mask. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we know who that is. And she like shoots Jade on a look. I'm talking about like the bracelets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I just mean like we shouldn't have any evidence. You know what I mean? Oh. Well, I was thinking that well, I don't know. I only know one person that's like tech savvy. But I don't know if I trust them to be able to figure this out. So it's kind of a 50-50. But yeah, Jaden, I just think you shouldn't have that mask and that hoodie anymore. I don't... Okay. I'll I'll burn it. (laughs) And this is like one of his favorite like zero degrees hoodies too, right? Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say, I think Lucia looks over your zero degree hoodie. Yeah. I'll take it. Wait, what? No, wait, if we're not, if we're not to get rid of the evidence, I, I want to keep it. Well, you just can't have the evidence because you're like, what, six, seven? I well, uh, six, seven. am not. They would never <laughs> suspect me. <laughs> wait, is Jaden the tallest out of all of us? He's oh, yeah, really he's not. like, what, five, five, ten, Jaden's, right? like, Jaden's really tall. <laughs> he's like five, or ten. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, listen. <laughs> yeah, but we're all like tiny magical girls in comparison. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Lucia's like uh five foot tall. I mean <laughs> Anne's not here to be eight feet tall anymore, so now Jaden is the tallest true. yet. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, I don't think Valerie is especially short either. Yeah, Anne's not our tall anymore. Aww. Yeah, so it's you, Jaden. <laughs> Six foot seven. <laughs> I think he kind of like he kind of like stutters like stammers like that like six foot six foot seven um I, no I'm it's fine I can I'm I'm fine I'll keep my hoodie just give me your merch <laughs> no you can get your own I, I can send you the website I don't need your websites I know where to shop <laughs> she just like goes back to her phone uh we don't stand zero degrees around here no we do not oh wait why why kind of a dick yeah yeah you guys never really haven't you haven't really explained exactly what happened at the paradise to the rest of the club members yet i think haven't no like you kind of got bulldozed over by the fact that aliens exist (laughs) that's true (laughs) yeah and um alberta the other texas yes Um, yeah Like that, you you know that like whatever happened got them access to the Crimson Signal building, but I think that's it. Yeah, we had a stage dance battle with zero degrees. What? Oh. Yeah, Queen Bee totally kicked their butt. <laughs> like it was hard. Lucia just like sits there and is about to fangirl, but then pulls herself together and is just staring blank face at the two of you. And conveniently, there is cell phone video of the good parts of your performance as well out there. Yeah, so we'll show them the videos. Yeah. Yeah. No way. Just just the last part. Yeah. It was like really cool. That See the fireworks? Really cool. That was me. <laughs> yeah. And you. And you. Yeah, I had to jump in later. Also, this was the same footage that got you noticed by Sasha Samuel. True. Uh, yeah. It was just mad zero degrees like that. Like, that's so cool. Um, <clears throat> I mean, fine. Okay, I guess. Yeah, but they also, like, almost killed people in the audience. Like, people were going out on stretchers. 
Wait, what? Yeah, but like, what a way to go. Uh, um, uh, what? Uh, I disagree. I yeah. Think, yeah. They were freezing the whole mall. That- yeah, the whole reason we were up there on this stage is because I did not like seeing people going out in stretchers because they were dying of hypothermia. So I decided to call them out. Valerie was like leaning in and interested in the video, but as soon as you say he almost killed people, she, for lack of a better term, freezes up and <laughs> <laughs> takes a, like takes a step away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's messed up. What are they doing on purpose? Yeah, and uh, like so they had these fans, right? And they were all in like parkas in the front row. But, like, this is in the middle of a mall. People didn't pay tickets to be there. So even people, like, just walking by could have been susceptible to this. And, like, by the end, they had the whole crowd frozen and then, like, ice was creeping outside of the audience area. Like, they did not have control of their power because Queen Bee was so awesome. And, uh, yeah. There's no video of it, but I totally ate dirt. So I I didn't do as well. Oh, well, oh. You you were trying to defend. Yeah, I, it, it's a good thing you tried to tried to stop them anyway. That they were really putting that many people in danger. Yeah, um, they haven't had any performances though, right? Lately. No, I've been checking out their social and not really doing much. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like been a big issue. It's been a big concern. I messaged them a couple times. No answer. Hmm. That's weird. It's just Crimson Signal promotional post on, on loop. Oh, they mm. they work with Crimson Signal? Yeah. Oh, yeah don't you remember? They had uh, like a recording at the at the gig. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, you would have seen that commercial playing during the... Well, you wouldn't have seen it, but you heard it yeah. in your dressing mm-hmm. room during the break. Well, she was a bit distracted at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, they haven't done any performances and stuff since, so I don't know. Maybe they're trying to get a better hold of their powers. Maybe. Maybe Crimson Signal is still collecting idols. Oh no. Mm. Well. Oh god. Okay. So we need more information on Crimson Signal. But we also have a Sing Star tournament to prepare for. Yeah. Right. So is everybody prepared to do some multitasking? Well, we have that training camp that we got invitations to, right? Yeah. I was thinking we should accept the invitation. I yes. I agree. Yeah. I, I I honestly agree as well. I'm ready to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And I mean Honestly, that would be a good opportunity for us to practice our powers and stuff, too. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. Yeah, if you check the Rhythmics email, you'll see one of those little Gmail reminders that's like, it's been a couple days since you've responded to this email. Do you want to respond? (laughs) Please don't call me out like this, Aaron. (laughs) Please. (laughs) (laughs) I also cringe because I just reminded you of an email I have to respond to that's been (laughs) sitting in there for a few days. (laughs) Yeah. I'm on top of all my emails. I'm just going to rub that in everyone's face real quick. Okay, let's get back into the game. Wow. (laughs) I will be dragging you later. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I guess we should respond and tell them that we're interested. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. We prepare for the SingStar tournament and we work on our powers to get stronger and we will figure all of this out. And as this conversation is winding to a close, you finally get another message from Karen. She says she spent a little bit of time putting together some of the info that Cass gathered before the hack went sideways, because Cass did manage to download some of the files before that happened. And she says that she'll send along more of the detailed files later, but she says that there is one thing that stood out that Cass said caught her attention the most. Um, And also says that Cass apologizes for that as well, because that's kind of what set off things going wrong with um, her setting off the virus and whatnot. There is a piece of technology that Crimson Signal has a prototype of called AED. And I don't know, the people who were with Cass might have seen this flash on screen, but I don't know how much you would have gotten to read that at the time. But 
this technology, this software, is apparently some type of supposedly auto-tuning program that was in use most recently at the Paradise Center show with Zero Degrees, seemingly in Zero Degrees' headset. And she says she doesn't know exactly why that is so monumental. Cass hasn't explained exactly what the deal is, but that Cass seemed worried about it. Can we research Zero Degrees? Like, who they were before Crimson Signal found them? Like, I assume they have, like, a record deal now, but maybe we can kind of read their Idol Wiki page. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe a resident (laughs) superfan can tell us something about it. Yeah. Roll roll a knowledge check. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what you find on Idlepedia or wherever you decide to check for information is, of course, that Zero Degrees' real name is Kelvin Wyatt, he, they pronouns, and he's mixed race Turkish and Czech. He actually grew up in the Czech Republic with a Czech mom and Turkish dad. While living there, they trained to be a dancer and choreographer and became extremely good at it as they grew up. But an interesting thing you find is that they also studied robotics and machine learning. When he came of age, he moved to Canada to further his studies in both dance and technology, and specifically chose Cadence for its booming super idol scene. Part of going overseas required being an actual music performer, so this is about when they started training more as a singer and composer as well. Uh, Some of their early discography was a bit more on the experimental side, but once he got picked up by a label, his sound started to become more of that polished electronic New Jack swing sound that you heard at the Paradise show. In recent times, they started working with Crimson Signal due to both of them having a mutual interest in music and technology, and now Kelvin is doing choreography and promotion for Crimson Signal, as well as some actual work behind the scenes with their products. Okay, so we have some things to unpack there, right? You know that he works very closely with one of the people you saw at the show, Kyoto Joe. So that could be a person to talk to. Yeah, you know they've been working together for a while, that even before Zero Degrees debuted, they'd been friends before that. Okay. Well, maybe I'm just being paranoid, but we could just ask Kyoto Joe about Zero Degrees and just make sure that maybe they just wanted to take a break for a while. After the show. I mean, we did, like, totally kick their asses, so. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense to ask about. Okay. So, uh, I think, um, my parents knew Mr. Cervantes, like, the CEO of Crimson Signal. So I was thinking I'd ask my mom about him. Hmm. They have, probably have similar experiences with some stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I'll do later. I'll ask and see if she has any dirt on him. All right. It seems like the meeting is starting to wind down at this point, especially mm-hmm. because everybody is still pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just picturing Angie's got, like, one of those, you know, when the girls do, like, the messy prep girl bun. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just, like, a messy bun and, like, a sweater she borrowed from Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So not nearly as put together looking today. Yeah, but it's an old like... <laughs> it's an old Sasha Samuel sweater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she's kind of like struggling to figure out what else to talk about, and like <laughs> stifles a big yawn. Yeah. So on top of that, ooh, ah. <sighs> yeah. Mm. Okay, you don't you want to feel. <sighs> Maybe let's cancel practice today and we'll come back to practice and get ready for camp tomorrow. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds good. So step one, win the Sing Star Tournament. Step two, destroy Crimson Signal. Step three, uh St- Step three, superstardom. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and everybody manages to shuffle out of the room at the end and make their way back to the bus to head back home. 
for our next episode, we can expect the characters to follow up a little more on some of the individual things they want to talk about. I think some of our mm -hmm. other characters might have other obligations before they go home. I know that um, Alan has the Enviro Club that we'll be oh, yeah. <laughs> visiting at some point soon here. But other than that, I think as you finish your session up, we cut back briefly to Karen's apartment. She's sitting there alone on her couch. She's got a blue mug of tea in her hands. She slowly strokes the handle with her thumb. As you see in front of her, there's a little sphere in front of her where she can see the lot of you in your meeting. Karen! God Karen. damn it! What Karen the and Spyagos! <laughs> Um, gee, Karen, you could have just called in. <laughs> Karen, you could have Zoomed. God yeah. damn. Our school pays for Zoom. <laughs> I'm covering for her. Would it help to say that she looks very, very forlorn? Aww. It does help. Thank you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconics. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at QueenBE15160871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. And special guest character Cassandra Tora was played by Alice Lily Kira, who can be found on Twitter at Magical Girl Kira. Background details for Zero Degrees slash Kelvin Wyatt were written by Nathan Blades, who can be found on Twitter at Phantom Arts ENT. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Erin Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Erin Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Erin Cerise and Zach P. Our ending theme is Lax Instrumental by Humans Win and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library, with the exception of Tubular Turmoil Zone Act 1, a Creative Commons track by Farage. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.